So after finishing both episodes of Ahsoka, I realised that I have wasted almost two hours of my life watching this boring piece of shit. The plot moves at a snail's pace, the characters take 10 minutes to say something which could easily be done in one, the lightsaber fights are awful, the dialogue is terrible, and the acting is completely lifeless. But the worst thing about it is that nothing Ahsoka does matters at all, because the Palpatines win in the end. Ahsoka is Dave Filoni's wet dream, and now that he's been given full control over Star Wars, he has free reign to make any dog shit he wants, and dog shit he has made, because Ahsoka is just awful. Most of the characters have almost no charisma, and the actresses who play them seem completely uninvested in their performances so most of the time they stand around displaying almost zero emotions. It's like they had a round of Botox before they began filming. Fuck me, even the droids show more emotions than these boring bastards. Now this show is heavily reliant on people having watched Rebels and Clone Wars before this, as Filoni has done a terrible job at establishing just exactly who these characters are. Now there's still 6 episodes to go, but with how slow the story and characters are moving, I suspect that the original script was a movie that's been stretched out into an 8 episode season, because the very first episodes are very crucial to gathering the audience's attention, and yet they waste a lot of time with boring conversations conversations that have no consequence, and after two episodes, all these characters come across as boring, shallow, and completely uninteresting. I think even Rebel fans will be disappointed by this, as it retcons events and the characters don't act like their cartoon counterparts. The fact that he is willing to retcon his own work shows that he doesn't give a shit about the franchise. No, this is his moment in the sun, and he won't let silly things like canon and consistency stop him from making a terrible show. Ahsoka, the titular character, is a black hole of personality, showing this range of emotions. Show me happy, sad, silly. Now, I have a theory as to why she has been written this way, and that is because she is supposed to be intelligent, but the problem is that she is written by a fucking idiot. Oh my gosh, how unfair. And no one can write a character that is smarter than themselves. So Dave has to make Ahsoka say as little as possible, because if he actually makes her say something, then the stupid thoughts from his head will spill out of the character's mouth. So Dave is intentionally making Ahsoka say as little as possible, in order for her to come across as wise. It's what Abraham Lincoln once said, better to remain silent and be thought a fool, than to speak and remove all doubt. He is so conscious of not making Ahsoka come across as retarded, so she ends up saying nothing of consequence. There's Sabine Wren, who out of the three has the most personality and characterization, but that's not saying much, as the other two are cardboard cutouts. She has been reckoned to have force powers when she never did, because once again Dave Filoni doesn't give a fuck. The third member of the Dead Three is Hera Syndulla, who is also a blank canvas with the actress not expressing much. She is a general, and yet she can find enormous amounts of free time to go on quests with Ahsoka. Alongside them, they are accompanied by a droid called Huye, which is a weird name for a droid, as usually they only have a few letters and numbers. He's a Jedi droid with knowledge of Jedi lightsabers, but other than that he doesn't have much personality, which feels like a complete waste of David Tennant's acting ability. So the heroes are pretty dull, but maybe the villains are good. Right? Wrong. First up we have Morgan from The Mandalorian, who is not remotely the same character she was. When we first saw her, she was just some random corrupt official on some backwater planet, but now she is a witch that can use all these bullshit powers and is also managing to orchestrate the building of mega projects, even when she was arrested. That's fucking stupid. If she had all of these powers and soldiers available, then why did she fight Ahsoka with a metal stick and lose? She is a whatever-the-plot-needs type of character. She somehow knows things no one else could possibly know, and can use any power the plot needs her to use. Next up, we have the late Ray Stevenson, who gives a decent performance playing the Sith Balon from the small amount of time we see him. He's also accompanied by his apprentice Shin and this other dude from Dark Souls, but there isn't really anything to say about them. Now let's dive into the shit show that is Ahsoka, so there will be spoilers ahead. 
The episode begins with a crawl of text, but this time it's in red and not in client, because Dave Filoni is trying to be different, but not in any meaningful way. What it basically says is that both Ahsoka and the Imperials are after a MacGuffin that will lead them to Thrawn. The first shot is of a New Republic ship patrolling the area, when they come across an unknown spacecraft that is using outdated Jedi codes. He doesn't submit their ship for a scan or send people to board it, no, just come aboard because I'm a shit captain. Oh fuck, wank bugger shitting ass head and hole. What's worse is that he knows that these people are evil and he still let them in. So unsurprisingly, they turn out to be Sith. It's funny that there are more Sith after Palpatine died when he is supposed to be the last one. So they start killing everyone because a giant cruiser seems to have only 10 people on it. Dave also copies the Vader hallway scene from Rogue One, but in a sloppier manner. Look at Vader when he is deflecting the blaster fire. He is very fluid in his movements, constantly swinging and deflecting from multiple angles, whereas Balin's movements are very slow and he barely repositions his lightsaber, which is lucky because the guards seem to keep aiming at the one spot. So after killing everyone, Balin releases Morgan from the Mandalorian and we cut to Ahsoka, who is on some planet, and she copies the scene from Underworld by cutting a hole and landing on the floor below. She ends up in some tomb and solves a puzzle where she finds a large golden snitch, which is the map she is looking for. But as she leaves, she is confronted by five droids. So she jumps back into the hole and cuts three enormous holes underneath the droid's feet in a few seconds, then jumps out and kills the other two. The three who fell climb out and begin to self-destruct, detonating with the blast of a small nuclear bomb. Why? Now these droids have been sent by Morgan, and she is looking for the map, which is crucial to locating Thrawn, so why would she put nukes in these droids? If Ahsoka didn't get away, then the map would have surely been destroyed in a nuclear explosion, and your plans would have failed. Well, let's just ignore that. Ahsoka and Huye fly back to the New Republic ship and meet General Hera Syndulla. She tells them about Balon and his apprentice Shin, and the possibility that Ezra Miller might be alive. Who the fuck cares? So after the meeting, she then goes to look for Sabine Wren in one of the ugliest cities I have ever seen. Why exactly doesn't she go look for Luke Skywalker? Well, that's because he would completely overshadow her in her own show. So she decides to go looking for Sabine Wren, who is speeding along a highway until two ships arrive. They tell her that they have orders to take her back to the city, but she just ignores them. And when one of them parks on the road, she manages to drive under it. But what's weird is that when the other pilot sees this, all he does is give her a nod and then leaves. What the fuck happened to your orders? This is the fucking military, they're not optional. What are you doing? Ahsoka shows up and asks her for help in unlocking the map, but their relationship is frosty as Ahsoka was going to train Sabine but never did. Well, Sabine, you might be in luck, because there is a guy who has started a Jedi temple and is looking for students. You may have heard of him. His name is Luke Skywalker. Ah. Now this leads me to another question. Ahsoka knows who he is, so why didn't she recommend Sabine to that school? Well, that's because even the mere mention of his name will be the most exciting thing that happens in this show. We cut back to Morgan, who is at the ruins of the temple, and she somehow knows that Ahsoka got the map. Don't give me that bullshit, she has the Force excuse, because... That's not how the Force works. She then orders Balon and his apprentice to go to Lothal in order to attack Sabine Wren, because she is connected to Ahsoka. How the fuck does Morgan know about this? I don't know. Back to Lothal, Ahsoka, Hera, and Sabine have a lot of extremely boring conversations until Sabine suddenly leaves for no reason and travels all the way to an isolated tower to unlock the map. The real reason why this is, is so that she can be attacked by Shin and have the map stolen from her. She ends up getting stabbed right in the torso with a lightsaber, and the episode cuts to black. With that, episode 1 ends. Wow, that's really... really boring. It was a dull, boring mess with problems already appearing in the first five minutes. The first episode of most Star Wars shows is usually the best, before massively declining in quality, and if this is the case, then this show is going to be god-fucking-awful. Episode 2 starts with Sabine recovering in a hospital after being impaled in the torso by a burning hot plasma sword. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? 
your arms off. Reva, the Inquisitor, and Kylo Ren have all been stabbed and been fine afterwards. Granted, Kylo was healed, but I'm sure he could have walked away from it. Even Fennec, who was shot in the stomach, lasted several hours before having all of her organs replaced, like you would a pair of socks. People just take fatal injuries like it's nothing. This is also another fuck you to Qui-Gon Jinn, because the pussy died from a teeny weeny little lightsaber shot to the gut. How embarrassing. Now the Golden Snitch is a map that will lead to Thrawn, because every time somebody goes missing, they happen to have a hidden map that will lead exactly to their location. So the map shows multiple galaxies, and Morgan says that Thrawn is in another one. That doesn't make any sense. Ahsoka goes back to the tower looking for the droid, and luckily for her, it didn't leave or self-destruct, even though it completed its mission in getting the map and had no reason to stick around, because if the robot had acted logically, then Ahsoka would not have been able to take its head back to Sabine to get the data out of, which points to a dockyard on Corellia. Oh, how convenient! Sabine, within less than a day, has completely healed from having her organs liquefied from the heat of a lightsaber. Ah. Ahsoka and Hera go to Corellia, where they ask about the assassin droids. They are pointed to a ship that is just about to leave. Ahsoka chases after it, but is stopped by the guy from Dark Souls, who was sent here by Morgan. How did she know that Ahsoka was going to be on Corellia? Because once again, she must have read the plot. They fight, but when Shin arrives, she fires at the pair of them and somehow doesn't hit either of them. But the people are retarded. She keeps firing until he jumps onto the ship. Whilst all of this is happening, Hera puts a tracker on the transport ship before we cut to Sabine, who has decided to give herself a very bad haircut before she joins Ahsoka on her quest. The final scene is with Morgan, and she is building a humongous galaxy hopping ship. She has a conversation with Balin about whether or not Ahsoka knows what they are up to. Presence in the Force is elusive. What the fuck are you talking about? You all knew where she was going to be five minutes ago. Why not now? So after that complete nonsense, episode two comes to an end. God, that was boring. Like I said before, this show is just boring, and nothing that happens will mean anything overall. So there is literally no point in watching this show, and Star Wars is still a rotting corpse that Disney continues to defile.